Welcome back to our recap for the fourth week in September. So uh, uh, this is the second installment of our new format where you get a chance to see a couple of bonus days at the end of the month. Normally what we would do is we would close out on the 29th and then hit the last couple of days uh, when we did our monthly closeout. But what we're doing now is is that we're doing all of the uh, um, uh, log entry days in this format and then that lets you close out the entire month that way and then when we do a, uh, a monthly recap we'll go ahead and show the graph of each day and then that winds up giving, giving you an opportunity to kind of see the way a month flows in uh, in a more natural sense so that you get an op opportunity to, to actually see what the system does on a day-by-day -day basis. But what you'll notice here is is that I'm not standing at the system. <laughs> and so uh, the reason for that is, is that I'd actually recorded our normal closeout on October 1st, but as I was preparing this for uh, release, uh, this, is the, uh, this is the third, um, I have all the information regarding what caused our shutdown. And so I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and uh, relate all of that information about what happened with our shutdown. And then we'll do a recap of the week. We'll fold both of those uh, into one video. So grab a drink and let's take a look at our week. Okay, so back on September 22nd, we got that notification that Stormwatch was available and then we attempted to do a test of that for you guys to see how the system reacted, how it would charge and all of that. And as I was drawing the system down to do a full test on how fast it would come back up, I uh, took the nearly depleted system a bit too far in the nearly direction and wound up actually shutting the whole house down. So, no big deal, normally the system would just kind of come back up, no harm, no foul. But this time, the batteries didn't come back online. And initially I thought that it was a, a Tesla error because of the way that, that they were acting, not, not responding. And so, certainly there weren't any breakers or anything that were off that I had missed. So that was all set. So, I gave Tesla a call and they uh, tried some uh, uh, troubleshooting on their end that wound up being ineffective. And eventually they said they'd have to send somebody out and that things had been elevated to a uh, level two service call or whatever that means. And so they didn't bother to explain what that meant and so it kind of left me in limbo. And well, it turns out what that means is, is that they were going to contact Sunworks by what method I have no idea. And then they're going to try to schedule Sunworks to have a trip out. <clears throat> Well, if I'd known that that was what they were doing, I, I, this all would have been solved last week. I would have contacted Sunworks, Sunworks would have come right out, and it would have all been uh, taken care of. But the problem then became just one of bad timing. By the time I actually contacted Sunworks, they were absolutely swamped this week, and uh, so uh, the earliest that they could uh, get somebody out was today. So. Uh, the result was we wound up going a week and change without the batteries. So, uh, but uh, you're all here because you want to know what happened. And so here's what happened. The fault actually all revolved around this. So this is the redundant emergency cutoff that SMUD forced us to install. Now, rather than install a beer fridge size cutoff on the outside of the house, because remember SMUD made us go to a 400 amp service, and so then everything is all scaled to that, Sunworks and I worked up and we came up with a better option. And so the option was to install this low voltage switch that's basically designed to turn on and off Cat5 wiring and uh, hooked that up to the, uh, uh, the, the Tesla gateway power. And the reason that we did that was that when 
uh, Tesla is running certain diagnostics. One of the di diagnostics that they actually perform is to unplug that power plug, that, that power and communication plug to the um, uh, gateway as a way of forcing a hard reset. Then you plug it back in and you're all good. So in order to avoid biasing some of the voltages wrong on that switch, we figured, okay, well, we'll just run all of those wires, communication wires and all, straight through that same switch. So flipping that switch was exactly the same thing as unplugging that plug and we were all good. Well, what happened was, is that when they installed that switch, they had a, uh, uh, a bad solder connection. And one of the communications wires had come loose. We didn't know that at the time. And so what we didn't know was, is that the Tesla gateway wasn't actually able to communicate with the batteries. Now, the gateway gathered all of its information, the power in, the power out, it could actually, um, uh, it was actually able to um, query the um, the level of, of power, level of charge that was in the battery, so even that was accurate, but it didn't have any way to communicate back and forth with the battery to get things like the firmware version and, and that kind of a thing. So, what wound up happening was is that the system will run along hunky-dory just fine in that situation unless you lose power. Because if you lose power to the gateway and the gateway has to bring itself up, part of that bootstrap program is it queries the batteries to try and find out what uh, software version, what firmware version the batteries have. And uh, it couldn't do that and so it went, mm, nope. And so it wasn't actually trying to do a firmware update at the time. Uh, it was simply a case of that was how it was recorded on Tesla's computers. When they looked at it uh, as part of that service call, that's what they saw. And so that's it. That's what happened. And uh, so when the system came up, it couldn't contact the batteries and it shut off. And so uh, uh, it was what it was. And so now I guess we're on to the uh, recap for the fourth week in September. So we start off here where we left off. We had a real nice music event in the Bay Area. And then I rushed back to try and get the system ready to uh, test that Stormwatch. Good production that day considering how cloudy it was. And we had a little bit of rain, but we, uh, uh, you know, had enough. That it was wasn't a lot of rain, but it was enough that uh, that we'd have to log it that way. So, 31 or 38.1 kilowatt hours of production for the day. That brought the system to 67 percent by total solar day, and even with the rain, because it's just kind of minimal AC that day, there was also very little use in the home. 35.4 kilowatt hours used by the home in total. Put us a little ahead of what was uh, created uh, that day. 38, or 30, 38.1 kilowatt hours created. So then, wound up, uh, as you see there, putting 46 kilowatt hours to the car. And then obviously, you see there was uh, nothing to or from the power walls, because that was when they uh, went offline from that communications fault. So, the notes, just that vehicle data reflects the round trip to the Bay Area. Give you a second with that. And then the 23rd, again, system still in fault. It's not on zombie apocalypse mode anymore. So good production for the day, 44.9 kilowatt hours. That's pretty good for this time of year. And at this point, I was still hopeful that Tesla could perform a restart, and so I didn't actually put any charge to the car. Home use is down. AC didn't really turn on all that much at all, really. Just a little circulating fan for a few minutes and a couple minutes of AC in the evening, just enough to keep the daily record showing uh, that we did use some. And then the notes. This isn't exactly accurate, again, as it wasn't a software fault, but instead it was only recorded that way on Tesla's database because it was not able to contact the batteries at all. Probably go back and amend that in the record. 
Right, uh, vehicle data here represents the day driving and the 24th the same average daily use small amount of AC use for the day good production at 43.8 kilowatts but it's becoming obvious that the amount of daily production is starting to be affected by the angle of the Sun you can also see that uh, reflected in the start and end times for the uh, solar production there and it's also you know, starting to just reflect that time of year and then we also see that the uh, grid has once again become our battery so we've got uh, 16.3 kilowatt hours that we drew from the grid uh, but with nothing uh, to the car we wound up uh, sending uh, 28.4 kilowatt hours to the grid and the notes just that, like I said, system is still down. We're still waiting on Tesla service department. Not the most responsive of folks. So I had decided to uh, give Sunworks a call, but I, I hadn't done that yet. And so the vehicle data that you see there is represents the uh, daily driving as before. I didn't put anything uh, to the car. And twenty fifth, decent production, forty two kilowatt hours, and again nothing to the car. I wasn't doing much driving, and I was still hopeful that the system might actually come up today. But again, using the grid, twenty two kilowatt hours we pulled from the grid with twenty four kilowatt hours going to it. Home use was elevated a little bit. Uh, with uh, some uh, added AC use and here are the notes and uh, again as you can see added uh, uh, that we had the temperature of uh, 100 degrees uh, Fahrenheit but the uh, that alone really isn't any big deal but then again you wind up this time of year the weather gets a little muggy there isn't any kind of a breeze in the evening and so uh, opening the windows at night wasn't really an option so AC was the order of the day and we have the 26th and by now I'm getting a little pissed off at Tesla's lack of response uh, to this whole thing and it was at this point that then I called them to find out what the hell was going on and only then did they actually tell me that they had reached out to Sunworks and so right away I knew that that was going to be a problem because obviously they didn't have any sense of urgency and they're not going to relate any sense of urgency to uh, Sunworks I don't know even by what method they they contacted them I, I certainly never heard from Sunworks that they were contacted but again pretty typical uh, cool sunny day total production 43 kilowatt hours home usage down a little bit 23.3 kilowatt hours and here we have the notes mostly what I said vehicle data just kind of reflects the day's local driving on what had been put in the car uh, the day that the system failed so this is still recorded as driving on sunlight because it is and the 27th it was quite a cloudy day. I, the sun did kind of poke out uh, uh, a little bit. Probably should have been recorded as full overcast, but did poke out a little bit. So wind up with uh, a uh, total production there of uh, somewhere around 30 point five but now here's the interesting thing for today is that uh, Tesla actually had some kind of a weird reset and you'll be able to see that better when we do our uh, monthly uh, totals but there was a period during the day that was shut off and so uh, the only way for me to actually get viable data as you can see here was is that I actually pulled up the solar edge uh, uh, information and uh, uh, used that for our uh, uh, daily uh, usage or daily creation so the usage is probably going to be a little bit off and so the notes 
And again, what you can see here, 8.30 uh, p.m. on the 26th, they had uh, some weirdness going on with at, tip, at maintenance that threw their system into shutdown. And so we don't really have any data from the gateway from uh, 8.50 p.m. on the 26th to 8.30 a.m. on the 27th. And again, drawing the car charge down, but this time I did set the car to trickle charge in the evening to uh, maintain some charge for tomorrow's driving. And so that was uh, reflected there in that five kilowatt hours uh, that was brought to the vehicle. And on the 28th, <clears throat> Another day of uh, reduced production because of the cloudy weather, 32.1 kilowatt hours. Still pretty good, but and then also uh, because of the cloudy weather, very cool. Uh, just a little circulating fan use from the AC, um, and so the home actually only used 16.8 kilowatt hours. Or 16.5, and. Uh, we had 16.8 uh, from the grid and 25.32 uh, the grid. And so again, using the grid as our battery a bit. And the notes, 7 kilowatt hours to the car to maintain that driving. Again, that was done as, as kind of a trickle charge in the evening at uh, reduced amperage. You can see that in the vehicle miles there. And then the 29th, back up to over uh, 40 kilowatt hours produced. Again, nice and cool, sunny day. Home usage very low. 16.7 kilowatt hours. Even with the charge that we put on the vehicle, uh, it only came to a 31.7. And uh, that's just the benefit of this time of year. No heat, no AC, just a little bit of circulating fan use. And the notes. Just that, system still down. Vehicle usage data showing that uh, 15 kilowatt hours of trickle charge that we put into the car. And that's also then reflected in that in and out of the grid. 21.6 kilowatt used and 34 cent. And the vehicle data there. And so then we have September 30th. Nothing to the vehicle today. Very low home usage. Again, mostly from not being home and only uh, 7.8 kilowatts, kilowatt hours drawn uh, from the grid and a whopping 34 kilowatt hours to the home, or to the grid rather. And uh, this brought our monthly total uh, uh, to uh, 43.2 kilowatt hours from the grid and 85.3 kilowatt hours to the grid. And so that allowed us to reduce our, our total use uh, from the grid uh, for the year by over, a little over 40 kilowatt hours. And that's going to be helpful when we true up at the end of the year. And the notes. <clears throat> Just that, nothing to the car. That's reflected in the daily usage numbers. And then after midnight, the car was put on a trickle charge again, as is evident by October 1st. Good production, 43.7 kilowatt hours. Home usage still quite low, 15.4, 22.4 when you add in the power to the car. During the day, that 15 kilowatt hours or so that we were producing at uh, uh, six and a half kilowatts at our peak, there, that's power that would normally again be uh, have been delivered to my neighbors' homes, uh, and uh, so that again, this kind of shows us why the uh, utility company is not happy with the uh, the whole battery situation, and so this gives us a good opportunity to see how that works. So then here we have the notes, just that, 7 kilowatts of trickle charge to the car. That started about a little after midnight. And then the vehicle data to show the charge and the usage. 
And so that uh, brings September to a close. In a day or two, I'll present that entire day-by-day run-through where you can follow the graph. I'm just finishing up uh, editing some of the uh, uh, images for that. And it might be interesting for us again to see how the system usually looks this time of year uh, with the in and out uh, of the, uh, uh, of the, the grid. Uh, and uh, then being able to measure that against what it what the system looks like when it's operating normally with the battery so that should be kind of a a neat thing to say to see and so until next time good luck with your own systems and if you're new to these videos and this is the kind of thing that interests you feel free to like and subscribe we'd love to have you follow along with this madness and until next time we'll see you soon